Hello everyone, and welcome to Art Smart. Today I am extremely happy to show you the film The Immigrant, which is a Charlie Chaplin film. It's from 1917. Edna Purviance is also in this film. And of course, as you can see here, Eric Campbell, who was in a lot of the uh, films that Charlie Chaplin did, is also in this particular film. This is an excellent, excellent silent film, and it's a classic, uh, not just because it's Charlie Chaplin. I think that it's one of his best films, if not argu arguably his best short. Uh, I sometimes go back and forth between this and another film, The Pilgrim, as to whether or not I think one is better than the other. And uh, it depends on the day that you talk to me, which one I think is the best. Uh, I definitely enjoy this film. <laughs> That's a great shot right there of the of the fish and the guy. Yeah, that's great. But anyway, uh, this is a fantastic film on a, a lot of different levels. And I'm going to break it down into two parts. Actually, you know what? No, I think I'm going to do it in just one long take today. Let's just do one long take. Um, now, just a few things about this film to get started. And then we'll talk about uh, some of the juicier things. Uh, yes, it is 1917 when this particular film was uh, released. It is a uh, film that was directed and written by Charlie Chaplin, which is pretty much the case with almost all of the films that he had. Um, Mutual Film Corporation is the uh, is the company that released and distributed this film, and it is also uh, one of the films that uh, has been selected by the Library of Congress uh, to be in their National Film Registry, uh, as it, it was considered culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. Um, this particular film is famous. <laughs> Uh, all, all these little bopping bits I enjoy. Anyway, uh, this particular film is uh, famous for being utilized by the uh, documentary Unknown Chaplain, which is by Kevin Brownlow, who is a great silent film uh, documentary uh, and historian. And anyway, uh, this film was definitely utilized in that particular documentary to show how Charlie Chaplin made his films and uh, what his process was as he was creating his various films. Uh, if you haven't seen Unknown Chaplin, I strongly recommend that you check it out. Um, in fact, you should just turn this off and go watch that instead because as good as I'm going to try to make this, that is going to be much, much better. Uh, now, this film has uh, a lot of great bits in it, and I think it is basically a great example of how Chaplin was able to make really great films by utilizing a unique method of of being a director and a writer. What he would do is he would quite simply kind of have a loose scenario in his head, and then he would, over the long haul, uh, figure out specifics, and he would work out the gags and uh, the plot as he went along. This particular method allowed him to uh, build up what worked and take out what didn't work, but it also meant that his films were incredibly hard <laughs> for the actors because they had to shoot and reshoot. And this film is no different. This is a film where uh, they filmed for uh, many, many, many different shoots, and uh, they had to redo a lot of different shots. In fact, this entire uh, beginning bit here, where you see him as an immigrant on the ship, uh, actually had to be rewritten and added later because uh, originally the film was supposed to just be a restaurant comedy. And I, as he realized that uh, he needed to have a little bit more later on uh, character development to make the restaurant bits stand out, he came up with this backstory of uh, immigrants on a ship. And as you can see him here, he is uh, interacting with others and, and trying to uh, have enough food. Uh, he's trying to survive. And you can see all these different uh, people are scamming one another, trying to have enough money uh, to survive when they get off the ship. And so he kind of realized as he was making the film in uh, the long haul that he was going to need a little bit more character development so that the restaurant bits that you'll see later uh, had a little bit more substance to them. And he uh, figured this out just by trial and error, redoing the shots over and over and over, over again. And I'll tell you a few more tidbits about uh, that later. Now, uh, in this particular film, 
I think Chaplin does an excellent job of uh, physical comedy. Uh, he does that in all of his films, but uh, this is definitely one of his best films when it comes to just having really great physical comedy. Even as he's passing out the cards here, uh, he he does so with uh, such a such a flair. And uh, I think actors today just would have no idea what to do with their body in a take like this. At least most actors. Uh, the fact that he was able to create such uh, great bits here with Without really having a whole lot to work with, <laughs> you know, uh, basically he's just sitting there doing a card game, and somehow he's turning it into comedy. And uh, obviously, you also see him interacting with these uh, thugs, and this could be a very kind of scary scene, but he plays it in such a way where it's a uh, really kind of funny scene, and you you feel good about him and you also uh, don't feel bad when he pulls out a gun here and you realize that he is just as as much of a thief as anybody else on this particular boat. Uh, I, I think that he really played that up quite well and uh, he staged that quite well. Um, now this is something that uh, I, I think you wouldn't see in films today. Uh, if you have a lead character that turns out that he has the gun and uh, he made sure that he walked away with money, that would be seen as too negative. And they probably, uh, film studios today probably would have had that taken out. And I, I think this just shows uh, when you have an artist that is creating a film, and it's not a film that is uh, created and run by a bunch of producers, uh, you definitely have a better result, and uh, they make better decisions artistically. And I, I definitely think that uh, Charlie understood that people know that life is hard, and we can still feel that Charlie, I'm, I'm sorry, the Tramp is relatable, even if he does something that is not the, the nicest thing in the world. And of course, uh, that last scene is bookended right up against this, where he is watching this really poor woman and, uh, and how upset they are, and he's going to put the money right back in their pocket. So he uh, makes the, the tramp incredibly tender. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, no, nah, no, nah, I can't give her all that money. Anyway, uh, it, it's incredibly relatable. People understood that he was a relatively good character, and he's just a victim of circumstances. Uh, and I think that was really done well there with them saying that he was a pickpocket, even though he was helping them out. Uh, I, uh, really well written stuff um, and again this is what happens when you are doing trial and error and you're not afraid of going back and rewriting to make things better uh, it is definitely um, definitely something that Chaplin did better than anybody else and also keep in mind he had the money to do this kind of thing uh, very few people were being paid nearly as much as Charlie Chaplin was at this point and so he really had the creative and financial flexibility to do all these reshoots. Uh, so could there be other silent film stars that could have done the same thing? Maybe. Uh, but Charlie definitely took advantage of, uh, of a positive situation. That's a great shot there, by the way. Keep in mind uh, that, that uh, statue, the Statue of Liberty, was relatively young when this was created. Uh, so it's, it's kind of cool to see that. But anywho, uh, I think it's uh, important to point out that there is a little bit of uh, political stuff going on when you see a film like this. We may not think of immigration as uh, being a hot-button issue today, even though uh, the whole, all the stuff with Donald Trump and the Mexican you know, wall of death that he wants to create uh, is definitely... Um, uh, something that we talk about today, but really uh, immigration is not such a hot button now. Uh, but if you look into the um, uh, the early part of the 1900s and especially in the 19 teens, uh, immigration was a big issue and it was uh, something that got a lot of people riled up. And so it is actually somewhat uh, uh, commendable that Chaplin would have a story about immigrants coming off a ship. 
And uh, so it, it definitely rubbed some people the wrong way. While a lot of people found it relatable and enjoyed it, uh, there were certain places in uh, the United States and around the world that actually banned the film or cropped it down because they didn't like the fact that he was talking about immigration. Uh, in fact, uh, the Chicago Board of Censors required two cuts to the film, um, removing the scene with him stealing money bag, and also uh, th they don't like that he thumbed his nose as an insult to somebody. Uh, they thought that this was negative, and they also didn't like the fact that it was a immigrant that was doing what they thought was rude. Uh, so at the time, this was a pretty hot button issue, and he didn't shy away from it. And uh, you would see later on that Chaplin would definitely continue to use this uh, kind of brazen activity when it comes to talking about subjects that most people don't talk about. Uh, in The Kid, you see uh, him helping an orphan. Uh, you would see later on in City Lights, uh, he talked about people with disabilities. Uh, and he would, of course, also talk about uh, Hitler and the Great Dictator. So he was not shy when it came to having these very, very um, hot-button subjects. Now, this is kind of the the key part of the film and what was the original idea behind this particular film. He wanted to uh, do all these different restaurant bits and there's a lot of great bits in here as you watch him trying to eat his beans and sit next to this guy and uh, and if you watch Unknown Chaplin, you'll see that this particular scene changed many times as he was trying to figure out where the humor was. And uh, he actually had to change the waiter as the initial waiter was just a little bit too uh, soft comedy-wise. And uh, he, he put in a heavier actor in order for it to be a more intense waiter that was waiting on them. And he reworked the uh, the musicians several times, and uh, he also had to rework how uh, Charlie interacted with the girl here several different times until he got it right. Uh, again, uh, you should definitely check out Unknown Chaplin. I think it's a 1983 film, and you probably can find it on YouTube for free. And uh, it's definitely worth the money if you can find it on like eBay or something. In fact, I, I think I'm going to check that out as soon as I'm done with this. Anyway, uh, this particular scene where he's interacting with her and he's cheering her up just continues to uh, show that there's a good heart to the tramp. Even though he uh, tries to kind of get away with, uh, with not paying for his meal and uh, luckily he, he comes up with money at the end, uh, he does a lot of things in these films that are not very... Uh, good when it comes to uh, having a uh, moral way of looking at things, but you can also tell that he is trying his best. Uh, you can tell that he does care about the girl. He does uh, care about others. And so uh, we, are, we are both understanding of his actions and somewhat um, amused by the fact that he tries to get away with things too. The Tramp was an excellent character for kind of walking that thin line between uh, being somebody that really pushed uh, boundaries of what was okay and somebody that was also just super tender. <clears throat> As you can see here, again, this is why they changed the waiter to a uh, bigger, heavier actor. This this whole beat up scene is much funnier with having this really huge guy. And uh, this is quite well done and quite funny. And so, of course, uh, you can now understand quite easily why the tramp is going to be scared later on when he realizes he doesn't quite have enough money to pay for dinner. Yeah, the 10 cents short. The guy gets beat up like, you know, crazy just because of that. So uh, I, I, this was well set up here, and uh, it was worth all the effort, I think, for uh, Chaplin to ke keep redoing the scene. <clears throat> I do want to point out that although for the average audience today this whole uh this whole film might seem a little slow to us uh especially with the fact that there's only a couple of key scenes you have the the initial scenes on the boat you have this and then basically there's a uh a short scene after it where you wrap up and you see what happens to the two lovebirds uh so it this may seem kind of slow moving 
and um, uh, limited in its uh, shooting schedule to us. But again, keep in mind at the time in 1917, uh, there were still films that were being made with uh, single camera setups. Uh, especially the Edison Corporation, which was considered by many to be super, super behind the times by the 19-teens. But uh, around this time, they were still making incredibly simple films. And if you look at this film compared with other uh, movies created during the 19-teens, this is a relatively fast-moving film. It's entertaining, and it has a pretty easy-to-follow storyline. Uh, a lot of other... Uh, films that you would walk, watch from this particular era would be harder to follow and would uh, be much, much slower and uh, have even less action than uh, we might think this one has. So uh, if you go and check out other films from the 19-teens, and, and, and I really encourage you to Google so, uh, I, I think you'll see that this is uh, quite a achievement for its time period. And quite frankly, even if you throw away the whole when this was made thing, I, I still think it's entertaining, personally. Uh, this was a great bit, and again, Unknown Chaplin works, uh, t tells you how they work this out, the the money uh, just happening to drop out, and <laughs> Chaplin trying to uh, <laughs> pick up the money without getting caught. Uh, very, very well done. And uh, this is all very well staged, too. Quite believable, too. I, I, you, you could see people doing this thing even today, the, the desperate person just trying to pay the bill and get out the door without embarrassing themselves in front of the girl. Uh, this is something that pretty much anybody even today would be trying to do. Now, <clears throat> uh, Chaplin worked with a company of actors on these films, and uh, you will see the same actors used again and again and again. Uh, and I think this really worked out to his benefit. One, they were all really great actors who did a fantastic job of, of just picking up their role and doing exactly what Charlie needed them to do. And they all worked well with him on this physical level. That whole bit of him falling down and getting picked up again uh, is basically shows that these actors know each other quite well and interact with each other really well. Uh, but... Another benefit, though, to doing a troupe of actors like this was that people over the course of time started identifying the characters as the girl or the heavy. Uh, basically, people started recognizing these other actors, and it helped uh, film audiences to quickly and easily identify what was going to happen in the story because they knew from other Chaplin films what these other actors typically would do. Uh, it, it helped uh, the audiences kind of ease in quickly and and kind of have a uh, idea of what was about to happen. Or if they turned away to eat their uh, popcorn or drink their drink or what have you, uh, they wouldn't uh, lose what was happening on the screen quite so easily because they kind of know the basic stuff that these actors typically would do in these kind of situations elsewhere. Um, now... <laughs> I, I enjoy watching this back and forth bit. Uh, this is definitely the kind of thing that you see people at a table where uh, they have an argument about the check. Uh, very, very relatable stuff here. But it's also done in such a way where it's entertaining. It's it's not just believable. It's uh, exaggerated just enough by Charlie's uh, actions here to uh, just add that extra sprinkle of humor that uh, you don't get in real life. But anyway, so yes, if you watch other Chaplin films, you're going to see these actors utilized again and again. And uh, they they always know how to step in and, and do the pinch hit home run that they need to do. As you're watching uh, Chaplin finally taking his eye off of what the waiter is doing here, it's great to watch uh, the physical bit that the waiter is doing and everything is easy to read. Uh, it's for the time period, a lot, of, uh, a lot of the films were difficult to really read what the actors were trying to do on the screen uh, because uh, sometimes they would be too subtle. I think they really found in these Chaplin films that great line between uh, 
maybe exaggerating your action just a little bit so that the audience can read it a little easier and also uh, not doing it so much where it seems corny. I, I, this feels relatively believable, but it's not quite as subtle as what real life probably would be. I think they find that line and, uh, and kind of cross it quite well. Uh, I think the ending here is going to be quite sweet as you watch the two go off and get married. Uh, this may seem like it's kind of fast to us today, but again, keep in mind this is immigration and uh, you're in a new world and you and you need somebody to help you survive. And so I think it's quite understandable that they would run off and get married this quickly. Anywho, I, I hope that you enjoyed this film. I hope that you continue to watch more Chaplin films and that uh, you grow to be more and more art smart with each and every film. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.